All right, welcome everyone to this D2L with Dave and Paul webinar series. Uh, this is session number nine. All right, welcome everyone to this D2L with Dave and Paul webinar series. Uh, this is session number nine. And uh, this is gonna be covering teaching business, co-op, computer science, and uh, technological studies inside of Brightspace. Hey Ange, how's it going? I see you there. Um, you don't have to have your uh, your video on, but I'll I'll add my video too. Okay, we've got our co-op people here as well. Some co-op people. Um, so just so you're aware, if you want uh, to see more of the screen, then you're able to do that at the very bottom by just clicking on the video menu and selecting swap, and then swap will show you either more of the Sorry about that, I just clicked off my, my audio, uh, or it will show you more of the screen. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing, just so you're aware for today. We're looking at teaching business, co-op, computer science, and technological studies. Again, this will be recorded, so uh, please just be aware of that. Okay, uh, just in terms of welcome and intros, my name is Dave Gomes. I'm uh, the Technology Enabled Learning and Teaching Contact for the board. I work in the Student Success Department with an awesome team there. Uh, I'm our Ministry Liaison for e-learning and with D2L, which is the company that provides us with Brightspace, the online learning platform that we use. Um, Co-hosted with Paul Lonke, he's one of the special assignment literacy teachers, the previous English department head at Essex District High School, and he's been an e-learning teacher for three to four years. Um, so Paul, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, thanks everybody. Um, um, I know Dave has a couple of times introduced me as an expert, and I'm glad he didn't say that today because I, I don't feel that way. Um, I'm just a, a guy who's struggling through this like everyone else um, and here to help um, and help examine these questions. Awesome, well, thank you. I will not refer to you that. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. That way in the future. Paul is the least thing from an expert. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. From an expert. So, um, okay. So today we're going to be doing a little bit more of a Q and A. Want to respond to the needs that you have uh, and just want to answer all the questions that you might have. So in the past, when we've been doing our subject specific sessions, we always start off with the first question, which I'd like you to respond in the chat pod to the left. And it's what do you do in your regular classroom that you would like to learn to replicate online. And I guess I typed that in wrong. So let me introduce something else in there. What would you like, what do you do in your regular classroom that you would like to learn to replicate online? And if you can just pop any of you, those answers into the chat, that would be useful for us because it'll actually help us uh, kind of direct us for where we want to go during this presentation. Paul and I have uh, have put together a few slides that we think could be useful and that we think may come up in terms of business co-op, comp sci, and tech. Um, but always having your input would be very useful. So if you can access the chat on the left. Okay, adding the Our Republic widget. Okay, good. I actually have that in there. Our Republic. Well done, Dave. So if you guys don't put in anything, that's okay because we've got a bunch of slides that we can go through and then uh, demo some things. And then as questions arise, you can always feel free to put them into the chat or uh, yeah, whatever questions or, or things you would like to learn how to do. Um, we can either hit those up during the actual session or after the session is, is over. Yeah, so as so, the questions occur to you, just pop them in. We'll both be watching. Thank you. All right, so um, we'll move on from that then. And uh, okay, so video conferencing. Yep, that's a good idea, Jeff. You so uh, we, Paul and I have been, uh, this is our ninth session that we've done so far. Uh, the first five were actually um, kind of meant for anyone to, to view and they were just topical things. So you have Brightspace overview, content, communication assessment, and then things for department heads, with it, which was session five. Uh, you can reach all of those through the bit.ly links, bit.ly slash d2l with Dave one and then just change the last number. So it's either 2A and 2B, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then uh, as long as no one steals my bit.ly for today, this session will be titled D12 with Dave 9. Um, now I just hope no one goes out and does that. 
But um, that's essentially where you can go to access these things. Uh, if you want to go back. So we may not be able to delve into communication in a big way today, but you can go back and watch session number three, which outlines a lot more of the information on that. Okay. So just as a, just as a question, and we wanted to kind of make this a little bit interactive. Um, we've got a question here that would probably stem from a business type of course. And if you look at this graph here, we've got some Amazon profit soaring to record highs. Uh, and the question we want to ask is, what can you predict about Amazon's profit in 2020? I'm going to initiate a poll, which means at the top of your screen, you're going to see uh, the letters A, B, or C pop up. And I just want you to choose what you think is going to happen to Amazon's uh, record, or sorry, their, their profits in 2020, uh, knowing that we're there right now. But based on that graph, what do you think would happen? Do you think they would increase, decrease, or stay the same? I'm just gonna leave it open for a couple more seconds just so we've got a little bit more. I'm gonna close it up. And I see we've got okay, 10 <laughs> people who think it's gonna increase. Uh, one person who thinks it's gonna stay the same. Great, and no one thinks it's gonna decrease. What I like about this is that this could actually uh, this could actually be used to start a conversation in our classroom, right? So if we just open this up, I could ask uh, I could ask someone who's enabled their mic or I could ask you to be in the chat and tell me why you think that. I could also look at and say, well, wow, they're, they've been in the green for so much of this and then boom, they're in the red for a few of these quarters. What do you think happened during these specific times? Or, you know, was there something that economically was was happening around the world or around the country when these happened? So it'd be an interesting, uh, interesting activity to do with that. So thank you for participating in our poll. Um, now this is a the polling feature is a feature that you can use within uh, these Bongo sessions. Bongo is just the name of the the, the product that allows us to do this um, this virtual classroom. Uh, and this is actually built into Brightspace, so you can launch these virtual classroom sessions just like Jeff was uh, referencing in the chat. Um, and it launches right from within Brightspace. It's safe and secure. Uh, it's ministry vetted and provided by the Ministry of Education. So only students can get into uh, these sessions and we'll, we'll show you how to set that up later on in the session. Okay, so the next one, uh, I'm gonna toggle on this mode called multi-user mode and you will end up seeing all of your names and your cursors showing up on the screen and you can kind of move around and manipulate. But I want you to identify on this image, I want you to identify a capacitor. Can you identify on this where a capacitor might be? Let's see what everyone's doing here. Okay. Since I don't know this, I'm just gonna copy what I see everyone else doing. Yep. <laughs> well, what's interesting is we're all at different things. I'm. Some people chose the blue one. Some people chose the black one. I wonder why that might be. Why would there be different colors of capacitors? Interesting question. Let's and move on to the next. Green, is that one too? Oh, there's a green one too. Yep, the green one would be one. And it would probably just be the, the different values of microfarads. The next one I'm going to ask is, can you identify a resistor? Let's see who can identify a resistor. Okay, I got some people who are on resistors, others who, and that's not a resistor. I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, cool. So everyone can see a resistor. They got those nice little bands on them. Let's go to the next one, Ange, uh, and we'll go an integrated circuit. Where can you find an integrated circuit? All right, there we go. We've got an integrated circuit. Those are the, those are the computer chips or the integrated chips. If you've ever uh, wondered what those are, those are called ICs. And then finally, I think this is the most difficult one because there's only two of them on there, but can you find a transistor? Who's gonna find the transistor? One right here. And there's one right here, little black things that look like a D. So anyways, um, I thought this was a fun way to use the multi-user mode to show you that, uh, that you can actually have students um, kind of targeting certain areas on the screen. If I let you, you could have also used the, uh, the tools on the right-hand side and, and drawn on things. So let's say you circle 
uh, a capacitor or you underline a transistor, things like that. So on the right side, you've got the ability to mark up and annotate on the screen, which I find to be a very useful thing. Uh, and Paul's got a check mark there, beauty. So I'm just gonna turn off that multi-user mode and, uh, and go into our next question. And this is going to be a similar one where we're still gonna have multi-user mode on, but can you choose the correct syntax for the computer science people? So which one of these would actually print the word hello world if you put this into an HTML editor? Who's got any ideas here? Notice everything is the same except for the P's and the ones on the right would have it. You've got the, the opening tag and the closing tag with the slash. Thank you for participating. Everyone give yourselves a round of applause. Uh, you can do that by clicking on your name in the users and set your status to uh, applaud. Thank you for all of that uh, great work. I'll actually give you a little clap there. Okay, so let's uh, let's jump into a few of these things. Um, first and foremost, uh, I think one of the skills that we we've realized is very useful that you you may not think you can do in the online classroom is the idea of a think aloud, and um, the think aloud with annotation. I know Paul. Uh, Paul's been going through this with all the different uh, subject areas. Paul, can you just like go over what a think aloud is for us? Sure. Um, think aloud, it could be done in any subject area. And the idea is that uh, you want to demystify the thought process of an expert performing a skill. Um, I always think about the Wizard of Oz. Um, so um, if you can open the curtains and have a look at the Wizard of Oz as he pulls the cranks and levers, and if the Wizard of Oz was explaining what he was doing while he was doing those things, um, then the process is demystified um, and the it's much easier for the students to learn when they're being explicitly told the steps that an expert goes through in order to arrive at a result. So this can be done um, in writing, this can be, doing, uh, be done in building, programming um, across the different subject areas. Um, so, we're making thought processes explicit. Um, so considerations for when you're doing that online, um, it, it is important to get your face and your voice in there as much as possible. Um, that does connect the students, it, it maintains their interest, um, and it does help them follow uh, the content that you're expressing as compared to just typing something out. Um, also, if you're doing synchronous or if you're uh, recording a screencast or something, um, using annotations on the screen is also another thing that's shown by research to increase engagement of the students. Um, so what you can do online is you can use um, images. So yeah, so there you go. I'm annotating things. Um, but you can use images. Um, you can use performances, videos. Um, it's really um, not very limited at all. Um, you can do whatever you want. What we have here is an uploaded PowerPoint. So you can put whatever image you want and then discuss that. Um, in a number of different ways. So uh, your creativity um, is on call here. Um, so you can uh, do this synchronously as we're doing now, or you can record this um, as a screencast and then have that posted for your students to view at their own convenience. Um, so one example of a think aloud, uh, we were kind of thinking about in the construction area, what would be an example of how this might be done um, and so last night I was teaching Dave about dovetail joints, um, and I think that's what those are called. Um, so I thought maybe if I was having students do a project like this, um, I might use it as an opportunity to talk about some of the features. Um, I might have the students just look at this and start by asking, what do you notice? And, and maybe students are in the chat or students are annotating using the pens there. They're pointing out things that they notice. Um, then you can direct the discussion from there. Um, and I might try to get to uh, what makes a good dovetail joint uh, compared to what makes just an okay dovetail joint. And then we can point out those kind of details and we might talk about, you know, the gaps and the, and the consistency of the cuts and, you know, the fit and things like that. Um, so that would be one potential application um, in the tech. Um, Dave, uh, you had some really interesting ideas for orthographic projection. Would you be able to talk about those? Yeah. So what I was thinking here was um, in, in terms of orthographic projections, uh, the idea here is that you're trying to draw the, the 2D from the 3D. Um, and so what you could do is as the teacher, you could be using different colors to identify, you know, okay, so this is the top, this is also gonna have to be shown on the top. And so when I go to make my drawing, I could use either, I could try drawing it with my, with my shape tool like this, 
that's not going to be the greatest, but it's going to at least give a rough outline. I could also use the, the shape tools. So I could give just an actual rectangle there. Um, it's not going to, again, be perfect because it's still going to show some of the lines that shouldn't be there, right? But I could create this kind of like this, and then I could always go back over top of it with, uh, with white to erase the lines that shouldn't be there. Give me one second. I'm just trying to... There we go. So I can kind of go through and, and show which lines should and shouldn't be there. And then so I could end up having something like this as my top view, right? And then what I would then do is as, as either I allow a student to do that or as I'm demonstrating this as the expert, uh, clearly I'm not the expert here, um, but then I could reveal what it actually would look like compared to what my drawing looked like. Okay, so when I just put these on different slides and revealed more and more each time, so then you could then look and say, okay, well now look at the front and maybe we do the front in a different color. So if you're looking at the front, you want it to be in, in blue. Um, when you're in the virtual classroom, you have all of these different options. So I can kind of um, outline you know, the front pieces to it and you get the idea here. So um, we can basically use those tools to help develop this in real time and then it's it's the again the teacher develop or demonstrating how they would go through that because normally you're not going to have that ability if it's in the online environment. So that's where we were kind of thinking like what are the other ways that we could use these these expertise think alouds and demonstrating those skills and uh, it it takes a little bit of planning and thinking about okay what's the student experience that I want what do I want them to notice what do I want to point out and then I have to be very uh, very specific in the wording that I'm using because I don't want it to be flowery. I just want to be here is the here's the skill. Here's how you do it, right? And so one of these things that we we kind of uh, talked about is the idea of of almost like the the YouTube DIYs or the YouTube how to tutorial videos because this would be something that could be used in all of in all these different subject areas. I think business especially with things like doing a screencast or a capture of your of your actual computer screen as you're going through things like um, you know excel formulas or if you're trying to do a, a budget or a spreadsheet or accounting, right? All of that can be done using screencasting programs and we're going to introduce you to one today. Um, but if you're doing something like tech, so if you want to show how to change a tire, or how to get right into an engine and do something or change some brake pads, you could always have a video camera or your phone recording that video and then sharing that to your students as a how to. Now, you'll be able to find these things online, but it's, it's always better if you can show them or if you can show your students that they're doing or that you're the one teaching them. And we've had some really good uh, experiences with that using the flip classroom. Another thing could be in programming, you could do whiteboard problem solving. So if you have a problem, you can have yourself just in, in a video with a whiteboard and you're writing out a solution or you're writing out framing the problem and how you would go through and solve it. And then in co-op, you could also do things like health and safety videos where you're recording or, or making your own health and safety resources for, for students to access in their workplace. Um, as you can see here, this is uh, probably not safe, but. I will not say that I've ever done that in, uh, in a school building because I would get in trouble. So those types of things I feel like is, is gonna be very powerful. And then it's just thinking about how do I do that? And, uh, and sorry, I, I see uh, Bill's comment here. Teachers need to be cognizant of safety concerns. Yes, absolutely. Safety must be a priority. And I think that's where when people are doing the DIYs on YouTube, they're not thinking about it. And that's where we need to kind of contextualize that. And so if we're creating our own content, we can be the ones who shows that to students as opposed to, you know, just some guy working on his, uh, on his car in the driveway, right? So that's a great point, Bill. Thank you for that. So one thing we want to demo for you today is this uh, is this new feature that we have in Brightspace, and it's called Brightspace Capture. Now, Brightspace Capture, or there's something called uh, Capture Central inside of Brightspace. What you end up doing is you install this video recorder. It's either for Mac or Windows. It's only a, about a hundred megabyte download. Uh, Paul was just downloading it before uh, before this session because my laptop won't start, so I'm. Uh, I'm actually going from a different laptop that doesn't have it installed. Um, but what you can do is you can record your screen, just like we were showing with the Excel formulas and things like that. 
Um, and you can record your webcam if you want to. You can do one or the other or both. Uh, you can also upload a video file that you've saved. So if you do record something on your, on your iPhone camera, you can upload this into Capture Central. Notice there's a little asterisk on that. I'll tell you why in a second. But you can upload that from your mobile device and it will show up as a recorded presentation that you've done. So it's, it's a great idea in terms of how you can kind of manage all of that together in one place. And then the great part about it is once you've made these recordings, they're automatically available within Brightspace for your class. So if you record it at the class level, then all of your students will be able to see it. So that's a, a phenomenal use for that. So um, you, uh, the videos that you create, they're, they are limited to your class, but you can also download them and then embed them into a web page or a content item or anything like that, okay? So uh, what I'm actually gonna ask Paul to do here because he has this installed is, uh, I'm gonna have Paul share his screen. And um, if you go to Brightspace, this, uh, this D12 with Dave webinar series, uh, what you'd have to do first is load up the, uh, or make sure that the capture, uh, the capture widget is on your home page. And so if you scroll down, there's this thing right there that shows the capture widget. And when you select a uh, new video recording, it's going to ask you to basically, you know, launch this, uh, open this Brightspace capture encoder. If you don't have it downloaded though, then right below there where it says capture windows or capture Mac OS X, that's where you download this software encoder. And, and that's what allows you to, to open up and, uh, and launch the, the screen recorder. Okay, so if Paul opens up uh, open Brightspace encoder, once it's loaded, you'll be able to get this option for either recording your camera and the screen, the camera, or uh, just the screen itself. So if we select record to record a presentation, that's where you get this. You can give it a title and your presenter. So I'm not sure, so demo and we got Lonky as the presenter. Are you gonna do camera and screen or are you just gonna do, okay, he's got camera and do both, sure. Okay, awesome. So it's gonna record here uh, at the bottom. Notice he hasn't started the recording, but at the bottom, once he presses start, that's going to record everything he's doing. Now, because he's showing his own screen right now, he's gonna get that infinity screen, but now it should show everything that he's doing on the, uh, on the screen, and it would also capture his voice, right? So the idea of capturing everything, uh, that's good. So this is the way you could do screen, screen recording open up Excel, open up whatever whatever you want. And then when you're done recording, you can select stop in the bottom left. Oh, not that one yet. So it's weird because Paul's sharing his screen, but then he's also recording it with capture. So yeah. um, so we've got that right there. Uh, and then you can, you can rewatch it and kind of go through. If you just press hide there, that might be easier than stop sharing. Okay. There we go. So you can see here, um, he can review this if he wants to go back and watch it, uh, or he can just click finish if he's ready to, to kind of move ahead with it. Okay, but he's got a 26 second recording. Uh, Bill, there's a 90 minute restriction on this, I believe, but it, it will keep recording past 90 minutes. It will just chunk it into multiple, um, it'll chunk it into multiple videos. Okay, so what you'll notice here is in this demo, Paul's video is showing on the left side and the, the screen recording is showing on the right side. So uh, if you click continue, then you can continue on with the actual recording, but it'll make it into two videos. But when he's ready, he can just select finish or you could do restart if you wanted to restart it. Um, let's just go finish. And then now, yeah, I have yeah. is, sorry? And now I have the option to publish as well. Yeah, so if you select publish, then you can, yep, that's the one. Click publish. And now that's going to load that right up into that area where, um, remember the, the capture widget that he was, that was demonstrated on the, the homepage there, the widget. Um, that's where students and you can actually access that video from. Now there is somewhere else where you can go back in and edit in, and kind of trim out sections that you uh, that you want to, um, but we don't have time to show that right now. So I'm actually going to be doing a, uh, a full hour session on capture for, uh, for summer school teachers around the province on Tuesday. So once I have that recording, I'll be able to share that out with everyone who wants to use uh, capture. 
okay? So you can press okay and then close out of that. Uh, I'm not sure what that says. Yeah, you can just do that, clean up event. Okay, and then close it out. And so now if you go scroll down to that capture and you go to course videos, once this file's been loaded up, you'll be able to see right there, that demo. Okay, so that's the demo. And so any videos that were created inside here by the teachers can be shown right inside the course videos. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a great and quick way of recording screen right within Brightspace and then posting it right within Brightspace. So you don't have to record, put it on YouTube, give the embed code and, and all that other stuff. Okay, and so that's- uh, Post it to an announcement here. Yep, absolutely. So inside there, you can insert a quick link and then there's an option for capture. Where are we, capture? Do you not have the option for capture? Maybe that's something I have to enable. Remember I said there was a little asterisk. Um, so Paul, if you don't mind, if you mind uh, sh unsharing your screen. Sure. Uh... So notice there's a, there's a little asterisk there for Capture Central. Um, in terms of the, the teacher permissions, uh, the ministry just finally allowed us to use it as of yesterday, but I've had access for about a week and a half or two weeks now. Um, so I haven't been able to, to enable all of the correct settings for teachers so that they can insert directly from Capture, uh, but that's going to be happening. So that's why there's an asterisk there. It is, it's great. Um, so Bill has a question. Can you create an MP4 formatted video for other presentations or posting? Uh, the answer for that is absolutely. So there is a location and I'll, that'll be in my hour long thing just on capture. Um, but you can access the, the file. The file is saved inside of Brightspace and then you can download the MP4 and do with it what you'd like. Okay. So uh, you can also grab the embed code as well. And uh, if you just wanted to put it on a website or something like that, but you can take the MP4 and do with it what you'd like. Okay. So that is, uh, that's basically capture. And I, I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be an awesome tool, especially in the online uh, world. If we're teaching online uh, and we need to do those, those types of demos, it just makes it more succinct in, in getting it all into one place quickly. Okay. Um, so there are two questions that we still really have to get. Um, Jeff wanted us to review video conferencing again, and there's lots to talk about there, and also Our Republic. Yes. Okay. So why don't uh, I'm, I'll 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 take over the presenter and I'll just demo how to launch a uh, how to launch the what's it called uh, virtual classroom sessions. So if I share my screen. Which I will do now. Okay, there we go. Um, I just have to open up inside here. Okay, so if you're in a course, um, what you'll notice is along the nav bar, which is the, the main navigational bar up at the top here. Sorry, I'm not in a course anymore. Uh, let me jump back into that other course once this thing loads up. Once you're inside of a course, along the top in the nav bar, you're probably going to see a bunch of icons uh, that are just default to whatever course we're in. But if you select this little drop down arrow, you can see the rest of the, the icons that we've pinned here. Notice I have Capture Central available, but that's something that I'm going to be making available to teachers as well. Um, but this one right here, Virtual Classroom, what you can do is click on that and then you can create a you can create a meeting and you see we've got all of these different meetings here. These meetings are the upcoming ones and we've got our recorded meetings down here. And what you can do is schedule a meeting in the bottom right hand corner and you have to give it a title. So we'll call it just sample meeting. Uh, you can select a meeting date and a meeting time. So if I want to meet on June 25th, uh, select okay at a specific time. You know, let's say it's at 10, 10.30 a.m. No, that's PM. I don't want to meet with anyone in that time. AM. Um, and then I have the ability to choose a max duration. So if I want to do a max duration of 90 minutes or 15 minutes, there is a little bit of a grace window there. So I think you've got like 20 minutes extra if you need it. 
but basically once you've got that uh, you're ready to you're ready to publish this meeting um, notice here there's some options down here I want to be specific with these the first option I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more so you can see it on the recording uh, there's the first option of automatically recording the meeting um, so that means that the second you launch the meeting it starts recording I don't like that just because you know when we started our meeting, there was about eight minutes of dead time. And I don't like having that in the recordings. The danger though, is if you want it to be recorded, you have to remember to do the recording. Okay, so you actually have to go up in the top right corner or the top and click off uh, the recording button. Okay, um, but if you do a recording, then you can have the ability to publish that meeting so that it will show up under the recorded meetings. Uh, you usually want to have invite entire class. However, if you don't want to invite the entire class, it's going to then ask you which students you want to invite. Um, but I usually do invite entire class, but if you want to do groups, you can you can also do that as well. Or individual student conferences. Yes, or individual student conferences, absolutely. Um, this one is the, the shaky one, so the allow external participants option. Now, I would recommend, and I think our board would also recommend, that we never toggle this on. Uh, you shouldn't be allowing external people into your virtual classroom sessions. And the reason for that is um, when you do that, you open it up to anyone on the internet who could possibly come across that link. Um, so if you have someone who, as a joke, shares out the link and you know gets someone to come in and, and bring something in of, a, of an explicit nature, you know we can't police that if you've toggled this thing on, okay? So I would suggest if you're if you have students in it, always leave it off. If you want to have a meeting with you know other adults, um, and let's say it's you're you're doing a an interview with uh, an expert in the field or an interview with a coworker or something like that, you could allow external participants, and then it will give you a public link that you can send out to them, and they can join. That's actually how we've been doing these sessions. But because I didn't want to load everyone into the list or the class and then invite the entire class, okay. So I would leave these settings as they are and maybe go automatically record this meeting if you want that, but leave them as they are and then select save. Now, once that's created in here, you can see it's added to my active meetings. And then all I do when I come in is very similar to how you have, uh, how everyone logged into this one. You, you can come here and select launch. And when you launch that, it will bring you to that page where you can enter the meeting room and, uh, and basically see everything. So I'm going to enter that meeting room, and I hope this doesn't mess up everything I've been doing. <laughs> okay, so I'm in. Are you going to join inside the meeting that you're already inside? I think I am. Oh, this yeah, is. I think, I think my brain just broke. Yeah, I'm watching. <laughs> I should not do that. Okay, um, so I, I want to. If I can jump in for a sec, I want to point out um, for people who are used to Teams meetings, uh, there is a, a contrast here where uh, with Teams meetings, you can enter early um, and you can stay late and it's kind of not an issue. But um, this one is a little bit more inflexible when it comes to that. You can't uh, start the meeting until the specified time and at the end, uh, you will get booted out. And one, one thing to actually share with that is that's that's the experience we want to have with our students as well because we do not want to have students inside the meeting after or before without uh, teacher supervision, right? So that's a big thing coming from OCT as well and our unions is that we don't wanna have any option for students to stay in there. So actually, I, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm gonna share a different screen. Hang on, I'm gonna share my actual screen and, and you can see it. It's gonna do the infinity window thing, guys. I, I apologize for this. But up in the top right hand corner, I've got this these three dots. And when I select those, there's this end meeting. And when I do that, everyone gets booted. Everyone's out. OK, so that's a, a very important thing to uh, to know is that um, when you're doing that, you have that ability. OK, so uh, what I'll be doing as well, Jeff, um, is because I, it, it's not very easy to, to demo the tools in virtual classroom while we're having a virtual classroom session, um, I'm actually gonna use Capture to create a video on how to run a, a virtual classroom and I'll be sharing that out afterwards, okay? So, um, so to answer any of those questions, uh, I'll, I'll hopefully be able to do that at a later time.
All right. Um, so the other thing is, uh, so the other question was about our republic. So let me just jump back into here. And as you're jumping over, I'll just sort of to tag onto that, that's for sort of live video conferencing. Depending on what your objectives are, there are also options within discussions. Um, if you want to have text-based discussions or you can have a more of a Snapchat-based experience where they, you know, record a brief video of themselves and respond to each other within a discussion. So that's another, depending on what um, exactly you're doing with video conferencing, there are other ways to go about it. Yeah, absolutely. Because video conferencing, we're always thinking that it's just uh, a synchronous thing, but you could have it being asynchronous as well through the discussion. So great point. Thank you. Um, so to answer uh, Rob's question about um, Our Republic, you can actually already access Our Republic uh, right from here in the digital tools on the on the board's homepage for, uh, for Brightspace. And under digital tools, it's right here, Our Republic. Okay, so if you click on into there, then uh, then your students should be able to to create accounts, or you should be able to your accounts should already be created, and you can go right into there. If it's something in your course that you want to add, then I'll show you how to do that. So you would go up into the nav bar here. Okay. And I apologize, it, it might seem like my computer's going pretty slow. It's because uh, to keep my kids occupied, I have one watching uh, something on Netflix and the other two are on the iPads. <laughs> so if it's glitchy, it's usually not this glitchy for me. But uh, so you go edit this nav bar and you may have to say, yes, I'll work with a copy of this nav bar. And then you can go down into, scroll down a little bit and go to add links. And this is actually where you can remove all the links that you don't want. And then what I would do is just search inside of here for our republic, select it and select add. And then now that will be inside your nav bar. And you can reorganize that however you'd like. But, uh, but yeah, so when you, when you click on that drop down now, oh, there we go. When you click on that drop down now, our republic is there. Okay. I think I actually may have clicked on uh, something else. So, so that's uh, that. Those were kind of the questions. Um, I think there might be a couple other things that we we should go through uh, in terms of um, some of the other slides that we had prepared. Um, just wanted to find which which well, one. We we talked about um, pulse. We talked about creating content from scratch. We talked about things specific to a co-op. Yeah, so I think this this one might be useful, especially for teachers who have not uh, who have no ministry content that's available for them. So, like tech teachers, I know there's some business courses where it's available, some computer science courses. But if you want to create your own content, then what you can do is at least start with just the like you can upload PDF or Word documents, uh, or you can create HTML editable files. But inside here, and this is kind of what it would preview like on the on the right hand side, you can uh, add pictures and text, you can embed YouTube videos over here or have like, you can't see it here, but this is actually an assignment and this is a discussion and a YouTube video. So all of those uh, would be options for you so that you can launch things directly from within the content browser. Um, and so if you're looking to do that, I would refer you to one of our previous sessions. I can't remember if this is the right slide. This one, right? The one on content, session two. So D2L with Dave 2A would be the one that you would want to uh, to go and watch on that. Okay. So uh, creating content is something that I can help you with, or if you want to, uh, if you want to collaborate actually with other teachers. So maybe you have some co-op teachers. I know Jeff Dragic has been a great lead for this. Uh, in the board in terms of co-op. He's created his own co-op course from scratch and shares it out with a lot of people. I think George uh, Eglazos has done the same thing. Um, but if there's some some uh, you know some tech teachers who want to get together and do this thing virtually together, um, let me know and I can help facilitate that uh, that content creation with you. okay or actually in any department, it doesn't just have to be in tech. If you want to make your own stuff then uh, then you're able to. So one other thing that uh, that might be useful is this app called the Brightspace Pulse app. Now, uh, I can't demo it right now, uh, 
Um, but I will be making a video on it and providing some documentation on it uh, in the future. But basically what the Brightspace Pulse app is, it, it's available for staff and students and it allows them to access their entire course from the mobile app. So you can see that, um, that this is basically the app uh, on the phone or on the iPad and it gives them all the functionality that they would normally have. Teachers can also download this and they can post directly from the app. Um, so you can create announcements if you need to. You can go on and grade work or, uh, or view submissions from students. Um, but basically the, uh, the idea is that students can access this stuff online. But one other thing that's great is they can actually uh, make things available for offline access. So there's this option inside the Brightspace Pulse app where if they don't have access to Wi-Fi, they could actually go to a place that has Wi-Fi, make all these things available offline, and then when they're at home with no Wi-Fi, they can access them as well. So that's a phenomenal use that uh, that this app has over, uh, over some other tools that uh, we may want to try using for online learning. You want me to show on my camera for a sec? Or sure, yeah, if you, if you want to, I'll just... Uh, Oh yeah, you can just turn on your camera at the top, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's very visible for you. Oh, um, look at that cutie. I, there's my girl, my little girl. Okay, so I, there's my home screen. I don't know how well that's showing up there, but there's my courses and I can pick through those. Um, and then I get that. And if I go up here, I can go to the launch the courses homepage um, and I can access all the different uh, sections and announcements. So there it is. Beauty. And, and it, it's really nice for reminders for students. If you're used to something like Remind 101, um, students can get notifications on their cell phones when you have events happening or things due or announcements posted. So uh, that's convenient as well. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, so I had one slide that was uh, one slide that I'm going to just flip to quickly just because it, it kind of highlights what that is. I got this one directly from, uh, from someone at D2L today. Um, so this is kind of the, the example of what the Pulse, or the Pulse app might look like for a student. It'll show calendar days, the types of things that they have upcoming. They can see assignments. Uh, so in this case, it's a physics course, right? And so the idea here is that you can have everything available in the app. Uh, it's available for Google Play and in the, uh, the iOS app store. Okay, so um, you just got to flip back to the other slide session. And um, so I think there's, that's, that's, really, that's really kind of it that I would say um, should be, that we could highlight in the time that we have. I think one other thing that we could potentially look into is just the idea that there is uh, a portfolio tool right within Brightspace. So uh, I'm going to be making another video on specifically portfolio, but um, there is a built-in portfolio tool for the Brightspace. And there's also a, a Brightspace portfolio app for mobile as well. So it's a different app from Pulse, um, but it allows students to capture their, um, capture their evidence through either a picture or a video, and then they can give a reflection about that. So that could be used in co-op if you'd like, or it could be used in a regular classroom as a kind of like a, whatever you would use a portfolio for regularly. So maybe a collaboration of work or a compilation of your work. Or the nice thing to here is that you can, sorry, what was that? I was gonna say, yeah, if you're tracking achievement of overall expectations, sorry, I'm interrupting you. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, that's exactly what I was just about to say. So the nice thing is inside the portfolio, um, tool, then you can actually tag by overall expectations and that will show up in the expectations progress page. So you can use that for assessment purposes. And Paul has the idea as well that you could then use the portfolio to help writing your report card comments because you'd be tagging the overall expectations in there. And it would be very easy to, to have that evidence while you're writing the report card comments. Okay. You could also use that for student self-reflection. I know they have to do reflection, uh, activities and journals inside of co-op as well. Okay. Um, what else? I think, uh, I guess the last thing I'll just, uh, I know this is more specific to co-op, but here, so like I said, you can, you can launch, uh, you can have students do reflections inside of the portfolio tool uh, or through the app. Um, you do have those options for the quick login 
launch points. So in the same place where we added the Our Republic, you if you're using My Blueprint, you could also launch My Blueprint from. Uh, you can set up assignment folders so that students can submit work to you if they need to. You can do all of your pre-placement training inside there, which I know many co-op teachers are already doing. And if you're running DCO 3.0, you can uh, you can also use that entire course that's available. Okay, so if you're having any questions about those types of things, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I know we're we're kind of uh, nearing our end time, and I do want to uh, to keep it uh, kind of uh, near the the times. I do also have to jump on to a, another webinar in a few minutes. So uh, if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to to either put them in the chat. I think I'll I'll stick around for another few minutes. Uh, otherwise, if you have questions, um, just send them to myself, send them to Paul, uh, send them to Bill or, or Ange, and if uh, if they want to relay them to me or, or Paul, that would be great. Um, all, all we're trying to do here is just is build capacity in all of you so that if you're wanting to use Brightspace to, to teach online in the future, um, that it's it's less or it's kind of demystified and uh, and know that you always have support. Okay, so. Thank you to everyone who was here. Thank you, Paul, as always. Uh, it's great having someone else to help demo things. Um, Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you all for coming. And and we're going to have, uh, I think, two more subject-specific sessions on Monday and Tuesday for, um, I think it's phys ed teachers and then for grade 7 and 8 teachers. So uh, after that, if you have questions that you want to... Uh, if you if you want to get into sm some smaller groups or get some learning throughout the summer, please let me know, and I'll uh, I'll do my best to to make anything that you want available to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Sounds great. All right. So I'll I'll leave this open. I'm going to stop the recording now.